everybody. My name is Kyle McCulloch. Today we're going to talk about storage area network protocols. So before we can talk about the protocols, let's talk about what a storage area network is. So a storage area network, is, or a SAN, is a centralized storage location that multiple uh, hosts can access. When I say host, it can be a VMware ESXi host. It could be a micro, uh, yeah, Microsoft Hyper-V. Um, it could just be a Windows file server or even a NAS device which does file shares. Those servers interact with the storage and end users and their clients interact with the servers. So as you can see, clients do not actually interact with the storage directly. So on all the storage area networks, there's a lot of different brands out there, but they all have something called one thing in common is they run one to two controllers. The controller is actually the interface that interacts with the storage itself to the ESX servers or any host that's going to use that storage. With this one, you can see there's two um, controllers on it. Each one of them is independent, and they can actually, um, this allows you to do like firmware updates or something on one, and then reboot it, and then go to the other one. And what we're going to talk about is the protocols that these controllers use to communicate with the servers that want to use the storage. So what are some benefits of the SAN? We have no scalability limits. If you would like to, if you need more CPU or memory resources, it's real simple. You just purchase a server that doesn't have any storage on it. You rack it up and you automatically have more CPU and memory resources that you can move VMs to. This gives you more high availability. If a one of your host servers would crash, you, or you just need to do some firmware updates on it, you can take it down. The VMs that are currently on it will automatically move to the other um, host, as long as you have that set up properly. And end users never experience any downtime because of that. Centralized storage management, you're not having to, re, you know, change memory configuration or storage configurations on all your ESX hosts or Hyper-V hosts. You can just do it from one location. This also gives you improved storage utilization. Instead of one server having 20 terabytes but only using 10 terabytes, everybody is able to pull from one giant pool. Uh, it just gives you better utilization. You also get multiple tiers of storage. So you can purchase some really fast SSD drives to handle your uh, files and everything that are used every single day. And then for your files that maybe only get access once a month, once a year, those can actually get stored into cheap drives, like 7K drives. And inside the SAN, it'll actually move them up and down, uh, depending on how often they're getting moved and everything. You also have thin provisioning, um, which is a benefit of the SAN, is you image up a bunch of 100 gigabyte storage VMs, but they're only using 50. You can actually allocate that other 50 gigabyte that you're not using to other VMs. And then deduplication is just a, sta a space saver. Um, there's a lot more that can go into that. Uh, you pretty much create an entire another video just on deduplication. Now I did something to help you guys out. There's a whole lot more benefits to it SAN than just these. So comment below and get your participation points of what you feel like is a benefit for a storage area network. So let's talk about to the two main protocols uh, that consume up the marketplace right now, iSCSI and Fiber Channel. And Fiber Channel just is light, iSCSI is copper. So the Fiber Channel protocol, it's a gigabit uh, speed network technology, and now it's even a multi-gigabit speed technology. Uh, speeds go up to I believe 800 gigabits a second is the max speed as of right now. Um, so I've laid out to you guys what the different layers of Fiber Channel is. It's a little bit different. You have five layers. OSI model, we have seven layers. Um, so this is just a few less. And that's just because we're not going out on a network with Fiber Channel. It is a localized um, network that really does not expand out really past the data center that it's in. So the design and configurations, this is a point-to-point -point communication. You set up a 
uh, point on one side and it's going to communicate to the other point on the other side. It uses MAC addresses to actually send the packets back and forth. It never goes into layer three, which is your IP address layer. So on the setup, what you're going to notice is you're going to have a WWNN um, designator or MAC address on the WWN. This is the SAN side. This is the what designates the MAC address for the SAN. The WWPN, which is the worldwide port name, is the server side. Now I'll show you kind of what that looks like in a VMware setup. So as you can see here under properties, so to get into here, if you want to ever configure, if you ever need to configure this, you click on the ESX server, you go to configure storage adapters, and then inside here you can actually set up your WWNN and your WWPN. As you can see, these are MAC addresses. You, we do not use IP addresses at this point. And on this particular one, um, it's running an 8 gig uh, fiber channel uh, card on it. And we're doing redundancy, so we actually get 16 gigabit of throughput on it. So the other protocol is iSCSI. It stands for Internet Small Computer Systems Interfaces. Everybody just says iSCSI. iSCSI is an IP-based system that uses the TCP IP protocol. Um, uses ports 860 and 320. One of the great benefits of iSCSI is since it uses network, it utilizes your existing infrastructure. So small to medium businesses that are looking to get involved in a SAN, they normally go iSCSI. Large corporations normally go fiber channel because it requires more resources, but you get better performance. And we'll kind of discuss that later. So with a iSCSI, you have an initiator, um, which is your server side, and you have your target, which is your server side. And so what you'll do is you'll go up and actually set up the IP addresses of your initiator and target, really similar to how we did with the fiber channel of the MAC addresses. And this is an example of one right here to where uh, you set up your, you get more storage adapters again. And you can see here in the past, and I highlighted it, I'm actually using the fully qualified domain name of the component saying that we're going to on this. So we're using iSCSI. Um, I could have also used the IP address here as well. So inside the um, storage array, this is kind of what it looks like when you look at your, say, physical port. And this is an iSCSI um, storage array. As you see up here at the top right, we have the IP address. Um, we're using an internal uh, IP address of 192.168. Um, at the very bottom, you see the iSCSI name, and that actually matches back with what we saw in the VMware setup at the, at the target there. So those two, that's why they're able to communicate like that. That's the DNS name. So let's look at the differences between Fiber Channel and iSCSI. So Fiber Channel is an isolated network. It uses specialized hardware. Uh, to communicate with the storage area network and your servers. Um, on the servers, it requires special fiber cards that have HPA initiators on them. Basically, it offloads the network processing to where it does not happen on the server CPU, it happens on this card. So that increases performance on your servers as well. It's very reliable because we're doing a point-to-point -point communication. If you need the light from one point to the other point, it works. And it's really high performance because we don't have the network congestion that we do with iSCSI. With iSCSI, we're going to leverage the existing IP network, and this reduces manpower as well as equipment costs. So for small and medium-sized businesses that have a reduced uh, budget normally, this is normally the route they go with. Um, distance is not an issue. Say you're a fear modeler, you go, I want to put my sand in a spot that no natural disasters happen. Montana. Montana also has the best insurance because no natural disasters happen there. So a lot of people put their sand in, in Montana or someplace like that and then make sure that the path is set up and has enough bandwidth to wherever their base is that will have the ESX server located at. Um, 
So again, we're lower cost, it's more flexible, easier to manage. So the third option is fiber channel over ethernet, which is kind of a hybrid of the two. Uh, this came out several years ago. Uh, everybody thought that it was going to be the end to iSCSI. It still, I don't believe, has over 10% of the market share out there. But basically, it's fiber channel that stacks on top of a iSCSI or a TCP packet. Um, the biggest thing is, is that it still requires special hardware to interact between the SAN and the server. It requires a low loss switch. And one example of that is the Cisco MDS 9000 series. So this is a diagram that kind of shows how that would look like in an environment. You have your storage cylinders here. They interact with these low loss switches. Those are the black lines. And then directly interact with the servers. You also have other switches that go off and interact with the LAN and everything else. The distance increases as long as you're willing, you're able to put these low loss switches in between the path of the storage and your ESXi server. So let's review. Fiber channel has more performance, but it's more complex. Normally it requires a dedicated team to keep this up and running. Iscovery, iSCSI leverages your existing infrastructure, but you lose performance with network congestion. And fiber channel over Ethernet is a hybrid of the two, but it requires specialized switches for it to operate uh, correctly. These are my references that I used uh, uh, to learn everything I needed to do for this uh, presentation. Thank you guys very much for uh, watching all the way through. Have a great day.